Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Four Dads Podcast with your host Don Julio and myself, Tease. Today is our 72nd episode. Totally forgot to mention that a few episodes ago when we actually hit the 70 mark. Uh, pretty cool. Been going for almost, coming up on two years in a few months. Um, but uh, thank you guys for all your support. We're up to about like 693 subs on YouTube. If you haven't subbed already on our channel, please check it out. I'm trying to post shorts almost daily with all the content that we have out. We're trying to get together in a few weeks at Eagle Springs, so that should be a lot of fun. And, um, and yeah, so a few things happened in the golf world yesterday on my way to Madera Golf and Country Club to play with uh, my buddy Brandon. Uh, they released the Anthony Cam 20-minute interview with David Faraday, and I was really looking forward to this. I honestly thought it was going to be like the legit, you know, Break down of everything and tell all in. Yeah. I was like 20 minutes. I was like, what? Like, what is this? You know, like, and fortunately, but unfortunately, you know, the drive to Madeira Golf and Country Club from where I am is about 30 minutes. So I just had that thing on listening the whole way, uh, all the way to uh, to the golf course. And um, it was pretty interesting. Uh, I know Julio wasn't able to watch the whole thing. Unfortunately, he was only able to watch some clips, but... I know we were talking offline a little bit about that, but what were some of the little takeaways that you saw from the little bits that you did see? Um, I mean, he brought up a lot of, I mean, there's, there's one point where, you know, he really spoke about his, the pressure that he played with in golf, right? Even at, mm-hmm. even when he was on the PJ tour, like he mentioned that, you know, he was never in love with golf. It just, it just felt like to him, it was something he had to perform at because Mm -hmm. of the sacrifices his parents gave to give him the opportunity to be a Mm -hmm. pro. Yeah. And I mean that, like that kind of goes back to our conversation, like about, you know, the, uh, that, that show on Netflix short game, right. Mm -hmm. Where you saw a parent who literally had everything, give their kid the every opportunity to be successful. Mm -hmm. And then you saw like a middle-class family and what they went through where it was like, it wasn't really breaking the bank, but they, they were just as invested in it as the kids were. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you saw like with Amari Avery and how, you know, South or South Crenshaw, low-income family has to use GoFundMe and do all kinds of fundraisers to try and get Amari to Pinehurst every year to compete being that she's, you know, the third ranked, third ranked 12 year old at the time, um, in the, in the, in the United States. Mm -hmm. And you see that. And I think that, that is something that you really kind of got to see it. Right. Like that's kind of an example of maybe what Anthony Kim was going through as a young, as a, as a young kid, just mom and dad caddying for him and spending hundreds, hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars just on range sessions, coaching, new, new clubs, tournaments, travel, like Mm -hmm. money that they probably didn't have, you know, I mean, yeah. And to play with that pressure and to hold on to that, until you actually have hit the pinnacle of golf. Like let's really like, let that sink in. He is one of the top 200 players in the world playing at the highest level of golf that you possibly can play. And he's not even in love with it. Mm -hmm. He's not happy with it. Right. And so he mentions like that, that was his, his ultimate, his, his ultimate demise Mm -hmm. that killed Mm -hmm. him because he was like, what am I doing this for? Yeah. I mean, It's crazy to think that like some of these professional athletes don't love what they do, you know, for us, like for people that are love, like a normal, I would say a normal size, you're definitely higher up on the higher, like six, two, six, three, like, which is on the low end on a lot of sports. I'm more six, like six foot, which is a lower end. Um, But when it comes to some of these professional athletes, like I've heard like Jeff Kent, you know, the giant second baseman did not like baseball, but he was good at it. And that's what he made his money in. And he handled it like a job. He mm-hmm. like, and he was obviously like an all-star and a great player, but there are those players. So NFL football players, um, you know, that do it just for the checks for the family, because they're really, really good at it. It's what they can excel in. They don't want to do a desk job. And especially for basketball players, how many players that are like six, 10 and above legitimately 
are doing basketball just because they are good at it and not because they actually like it. Like, cause from a young age, you're pushed. Oh, you're tall basketball. Oh, you're tall basketball. And even if you don't like it, basketball, that's your only chance. That's your only opportunity. That's the only way for you to get somewhere. So I can only imagine all that pressure, you know, with like you were saying, all the money that's going into his golf is probably the most expensive sport to get into. Uh, be next to, I would say probably Hockey, out of like the four tennis. Yeah. Well, yeah, baseball, Dude, hockey, I would say. Baseball with, hockey, with like... No. Hockey is stupid expensive, bro. That equipment is up there. Like, a, like I, I was reading something totally off subject, but I was reading something that, like, the the average goalie set for, like, a teenager is almost, like, $4,000. I Dude. mean, you got to think, when we played baseball, mm-hmm. that's where still, like, around... I think They're it like wasn't until 300, 400 bucks. Yeah, it, right I was gonna say there. it wasn't until it wasn't until high school where like the Beezers started coming out, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like the orange, the orange and blue stuff. Yep. I mean, that was a four hundred dollar bat. Mm-hmm. If you had that, everyone was like, "Whoa!" Or even okay, one that I think was a sleeper, but maybe did not get the recognition was the Nike One. Do you remember the white Nike One? That bat was stupid pop. That was five hundred dollars. <laughs> That was five hundred dollars back in two thousand. And then you had the three hundred dollar gloves, three four hundred dollar gloves, and you had a hundred dollar cleats. Yeah. And then every few years you get the same. But yeah, like the money that's invested in this, it makes sense because yeah. one thing that he did mention in the interview was like, I honestly don't remember anything from the PGA Tour. Like I just don't remember it. Like it just because he was so stressed and he wasn't enjoying it. That he literally has, he's like, you can ask me and I can't tell you. Kind of like the opposite of how you are when you golf. You remember every single shot, what it was, you know, what you shot, like how you shot it, what you were going for. He was just like, yeah, yeah. I honestly don't know, dude. Like, it just, I don't know. He didn't. And another thing that really po- popped out to me was he said, I have an addictive personality. And right there, I was like, okay. So what we talked about earlier might still have a chance for being a reason why everything went down. <laughs> And yeah. people with addictive personalities, like, I don't know, like, it's, <coughs> you know, it could really take you down the wrong path quickly, you know, if you have a, a personality like that. Um, and let's see, what other things did he mention? He, I was talking. Well, hold on, hold on. I, I, I was going to say, I, I was going to say something like, I feel like this is like the perfect episode to have Evan from the par train here to kind of talk about the mental. Oh, psychology it, wise. Right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, because, because, you know, mm-hmm. like you, you, you made a good point, mm-hmm. right? Like, which is that he was never in love with the game, right? Same mm-hmm. with Jeff Kent. Mm-hmm. It was like a, mm-hmm. it was, it was literally like a job for them. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I mean, I remember like in college, like when, when it did become like a full, you know, 5 a.m. Mm-hmm. workout, go to class mm-hmm. for two hours, come back and do bullpen, right? Then you go to class for another two hours, come back and do, your secondary weights, then go back to class and for an hour, then you have like your lunch break, then you have to go back and, you know, do stretching, do rehabilitation, do all these different things. It, it, it's like, yeah, it, it does feel like that. Like it, it kind of takes mm-hmm. you away from enjoying those little things as, you know, for us as, as young men still like 18, 19 years old. Right. It, but again, like, to, to be committed to something like that, you have to have some level of passion. You have to have some level mm-hmm. of respect and love for the game. So to hear him say like, you know, he never, he never felt like he really loved it. It's like, dude, you mm-hmm. got a crazy level of discipline just to, just to continue to get after it. Right. Like, right. The, the, you know, you and I can, you and I can, 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 you know, relate to that where dude, the days that we just didn't want to go to the gym, because we had a bender the day before, or maybe we even we just stayed up all night playing Halo. And you just didn't you didn't give your body the rest, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just going through the motions, and it's like, yeah. I, I'm thinking in my head, like, dude, you weren't in love with this, which means you could have been doing anything else that you mm-hmm. cared more about than yeah. playing golf. But then you went through the motions and still played. Were this like, good? Yeah, we're still mm-hmm. that good. It's yeah. like it's absurd. There's just people who have that God given talent that is just like it's a once in a lifetime thing. Right. And this, and again, mm-hmm. this goes back to, this goes back to our Josh Hamilton conversation. Right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Josh, mm-hmm. Josh Hamilton loved the game of baseball, but he loved to party more, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and still, even when the guy was on a bender, maybe just still probably waking up drunk in the morning, goes, and does an ice bath to try and just get it out of his system as quick as possible to go through the motions and still be that good. It's like it's insane, dude. It's, it, it, it's, it's insane. And that's another, that, like, 
well, it's the opposite of like Moneyball, where it goes like, "Here's baseball teams like budget. Here's here's the lowest. Here's fifty feet of crap, and here's us." It's like the opposite, yeah. where it's like, "Here's a top player. Here's like fifty feet of crap or whatever, and the and someone up here that has all the talent in the world." Like you, like could you imagine Tiger Woods with Anthony Kim, not passionate for the game, but he had that skill set? Like he might have still worn a few majors. You know, that might be like a John Daly. It might have been more like a John Daly, should I say. If John Daly dedicated himself a little yeah. bit like more like Tiger Woods kind of a thing, well, yeah. you never know. But it's it's something to be said of just that talent that he had. And, and one other thing he did mention, dude, he said, to be honest, I started taking golf a lot more seriously to get in the competitive mode within the last like four to five months. He's like, besides that, I have not really been playing that much golf. And it's like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding yeah. me? Like, like you would think that, oh, I've been waiting for like a year or two to get back into it, you know, and I had an idea that Liv was going to call or, you know, I've been talking with Greg Norman. And it's like, no, Greg called me like three months ago and was like, hey, what do you think? Then he's like, yeah, I'll think about it. I'll try to get back into it. And it's like, dude, that's you three months when he shot like a 65 at the, yeah, you know, like that, that, the Asian Kong. tour or whatever. And yeah, or, or no, so that, that was Liv. But still, it's just like, he has it, and now he's falling in love with the game because he's a dad. He said because he has his daughter, he has someone to, besides, of course, his wife. He's like got he something more to, to live for. Yeah, exactly. Some, yeah. Exactly. So she's just changed his life. And like he said, even on the first round that he played at Live, he wrote Bella on the ball just to calm himself, you know, and just be like, hey, it's just a game. You know, no matter what, she's going to love you no matter what, you know. Yeah. You, you play yeah. good or play bad. And that's the best part about being a dad, you know. The, not going to matter to them they just want to hang out with you they want you to be their yeah. dad yeah exactly yeah i mean that's that's a powerful message man i mean it, it it really does change your perspective being a dad and kind of like what motivates you and what what gets you up in the morning to do the things that you want to do right like mm -hmm. you know we both we both have jobs i don't yeah. i mean i don't i don't dislike my job but i love the money right mm -hmm. like i'll be i'll be i'll be yeah. the i'll be the best cheerleader for this company if it means that my pockets are going to get fuller like yeah right of course of course, of course. you know i'll do what it takes but at the end of the day it's like yeah you know to see to see my daughter's smiling face for her to come over and want to be on my lap to say hi to the people that i'm talking to it's like those are moments that for me it's like it's what it's all about you know like being able to go read books to her when she's going to bed, like do sing Miss Rachel songs and do alphabets and, you know, name animals. It's like to her, you're, you know, I'm, I'm Superman. I'm indestructible. Mm -hmm. Like that's, I'm like her right. everything, you know, same with her mm -hmm. mom. Her mom, I mean, Isis does incredible things for her that it's just like, not only did you give birth to this incredible, to this incredible mm -hmm. kid, but like just your nurturing skills alone is just like, Wow. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, it's crazy. And and <clears throat> I'm just gonna keep throwing in little tidbits of things. So when we talk, I just keep remembering a few other things from it. But like about the dad thing, he mentioned that apparently from a young age, he was told that he might not be able to be a dad for whatever reason. And the fact that he was able to have a child was just so much more great because it was kind of like a miracle, a miracle child. Yeah. And I guess also his wife was like totally unrelated to like having a kid, but like She's like, hey, like, I want to get into golf. And that's kind of how he started slowly getting back into it. Because, like, for a while, he just did not play. He was just not that interested in it. And he's like, there's a lot of other games you can play. Are you sure you want to play golf? Like, <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's just, it's just really cool to hopefully – I can't wait for this documentary to hopefully lay out everything. He said he, about, like, 90% of his friends that he hung out with before out of his life, you know, he – just was hanging out with the wrong people, thought he was doing everything you're supposed to do. He said he watched a crap load of reality TV show, TV during the times that he had surgeries. I guess like in like two to three years, he had like three or four or five surgeries, you know, to reconstruct, you know, his Achilles and whatever other injuries that happened throughout that time. And he was just on the couch, just binge watching reality TV. And I'm like, that's got to be like the most depressing thing ever, man. Like I... I think the only thing I really had to do was I, I sprained my ankle once and I had like tendonitis in my arm. But like, besides that, I never had like a rate, a real surgery where you can't move for months at a time. 
Yeah. And for being an athlete and always being active, that would be like the worst thing ever. To just have to sit and wait and just wait and just wait. Yeah. And then your rehab sucks because it's painful. It's never good. You know, it never, especially like an ACL or whatever. I've heard from bronze that, you know, the rehab sucks, you know, and it's brutal. But I mean, oh, it'd be so depressing. I don't know how I was able to stay stay alive, honestly. Like that'd be that'd be tough. That'd be tough to go about. Yeah, man. I mean, speaking speaking of injuries, how's how's that hamstring feeling after missing that soccer ball? Surprisingly, <laughs> I didn't hurt anything, dude. Dude. <laughs> oh man. That was hilarious, huh? Right, well, the way that you kicked it, I could just imagine you'd be like, hi yeah," and then just, oh, oh my hamstring. Dude, my I, can still, I can still see that ball, soccer ball right now, and I for sure thought I was going to smash that thing and just completely whiffed. And I was like, oh, my. I'm so glad I had my drone up for that. I'm like, we're, we were celebrating th- for Easter, and I brought out my drone. I was like, hey, let's get out some shots. Like, why not, you know, get some cool footage of the family hanging out. Every, and they played soccer, so like, let's get the drone out. Let's get some cool little footage, and yeah. Man, it was really entertaining to watch some people. I haven't played soccer since second grade. Someone brought, I brought a soccer ball one day, and that was the only time I had ever played soccer. I yeah. knew what to do while playing. I just did – my body did not know how to do it because I knew how to do it by watching – playing FIFA for years, but I did not know how to actually make the moves or kick the ball. And oh, If you want to watch a good time, just watch me play soccer without shoes or without cleats. <laughs> oh, man, slipping all yeah. over the place. That's like that's like Adelina's favorite thing. Like the other day, we went to the park and I took her I took her soccer ball with us because we'll we'll use it as a soccer ball, then we use it as a basketball and all this different stuff. But like, I actually got like a good like a good uh, juggling going, and she was just like, <laughs> <laughs> it was a good uh, time, dude. That's awesome. But, but yeah, man, I um I don't know, man. I you know it. I think that's one thing that a lot of people honestly just don't talk about, especially ex athletes, right? Like, did you truly love what you were doing? Mm -hmm. You know, because especially like for us, right. It's hard to say that you truly love baseball, right? Like the fondest, the, the, the memories that are the, the things that always bring me back is one, the sound, the sound of, of an ice cream truck going by. I just remember playing playing little league, always hearing the ice cream truck coming around. Or That's coming why you around. play it, huh? That's how you get and, back. Well, <laughs> yeah. come, come like, you coming going? around like yeah, coming around like the fourth inning, right? And then you'd just be waiting there, right? And then it was like, all right, Dad, like, can I get a, you know, I think mine was like the snow cone, right? The the mint or the the cookies and cream snow cone thing. I was like, yeah, I want that, and um, the like springtime right the fresh cut this the smell of fresh cut grass but i always hated it because then my eyes just got freaking watery because it was uh, like my allergies kicked in right uh, and then the sound like the sound of mosquitoes buzzing in your ear when you're at like when you're in right field left field or even behind the dish where the lights just flash it on you mm, right mm-hmm, mm-hmm, or even yeah. standing on the mound you just hear the zzz, zzz, <laughs> you're like I'm trying to throw a pitch here leave me alone <laughs> yeah. like those are like, those are just some little things the little things right but i mean the sound of the sound of the pop of the glove right but oh yeah after I, letting I mean, one go dude and you feeling good oh yeah i mean yeah oh yeah i mean even just the the blisters you used to get from your fingers from oh yeah just uh-huh. rip, ripping the seams like yep yep just those those things right even the smell of the ball the smell of the ball. It's weird. Pine tar doesn't do anything for me. The glove. Like the I like the glove. I like the smell of yeah. the glove. That was yeah. always a good one for me. I mean, like, yeah, for like what well, you're saying, like, to be honest, I loved playing baseball. I loved playing like it in high school. I played first base. So that was fun. I, was, I knew I was always in the action. I was pretty good at hitting. <clears throat> I had confidence there. I had fun in college. I loved pitching. I hated recovery. I hated the day after pitching with your arm, yeah. which is hanging and you had to run and I hated running. Uh, so I hated the recovery. I hated everything before that, but when I was on the mound, it was so much fun. So if the preparation and all that stuff, I was like, dude, dude, my bullpens were minimal. I just was a, I was just like, Hey, my goal is to pitch, be ready for the next start and then pitch again. 
And it definitely wasn't the best thing. I didn't treat my body that well. I would like LeBron's could tell you, like I would literally make like a dozen chocolate chip cookies before a game and have like seven wake up at like our game would be like at three, wake up at 11, make cookies, eat that as my pregame and then go out there and just deal. You're like, Hey, well, that's probably not good. It's like, yeah, it's not. But I mean, I did it. And I also had that arrogance of like, yo, I'm going to be that person to show you that you can do it with a body full of, yeah. with a tub of freaking toll house in your body, you know? Well, that, I mean, dude, that was, that was like me. I mean, our, like our go-to was little Caesars pizzas, hot and ready's. We just get a bunch of those mm-hmm. have them for breakfast, lunch, dinner. If there was still any left, right. Top right. ramen. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, dude, the worst ones that just absolutely killed me was, was, uh, and they still kill me to this day. Like, I don't even know how I was able to eat them is like Jack in the box tacos, Jack in the box tacos with a Dr. Pepper. I don't know if I've ever had re- them. Don't you, you, you're welcome. <laughs> well, now right? no. I mean, like, yeah, same thing. Like when I think about like Pizza Hut or I think about uh Domino's uh, or those pizzas that you would like you said, uh the five dollar pizzas, the, the hot and ready. Yeah. Um, like those were great back when we were younger, but now, dude, if I eat like two of those, I am so bloated and uncomfortable. I'm like, what the heck? Like, I just my body just can't do it anymore. And that goes on process for, for other foods too, right? Like I, yeah. I couldn't tell you the last time I ate at McDonald's. I couldn't tell you the last time I ate at Carl's Jr. I couldn't. I mean, I think Taco Bell is the closest that I'll get to like you know actual uh, fast food. Uh, but for the most part, like I just don't really eat it. One because it's not as good, and it definitely shows a lot more on our bodies the older we're getting, which sucks. But reeling it back into golf really quickly. Um, one cool thing is the Live Miami is this weekend. Um, I Doral. think they're playing at Doral. Yeah, I just saw that. And that's where you played, right? That's the one. Um, yep. They're playing the Blue Monster. And yeah, I mean, that should be a good one. Apparently, there's been a lot of talk of Joaquin Neiman, you know, playing like as like a favorite to win the Masters this year with how well he's been playing. And I, I'm blanking right now if if there is a tournament in between Live Miami and the Masters. Uh because I know there's – wait, no, this is the last week, right? Masters is the next weekend. That's right. So this mm-hmm. weekend is – I think it's the Valero Texas Open for the PGA Tour. And, uh, and then live. And then next week, okay, that's right, is the Masters. So that'll be awesome. And that actually kind of that would, actually kind of works out. I'm glad you guys aren't coming out to, to play golf on that Sunday because that would be the Masters Sunday that we'd be yeah. out on the course. Um, but, uh, but what are your – We'll, we'll save the Masters talk for next week. But uh, for Live Miami, playing Doral. I mean, I know you remember some of those shots. I know you remember you I remember, there. I remember. I remember all the shots there. That was yeah. <laughs> that was a fun. That was a fun round. I mean, it's definitely one. It's definitely one that on a windy day, you one thousand percent can get through. Like, n- I mean, not get through, but it's going to favor you on a lot of the longer holes. Mm. But just that just that first just that first hole alone is it's kind of it's kind of the tone setter right because it's i mean dude the first hole from where i think they're gonna play from is like 750 yards from the from the tour from like the tour championship or like tour tees or six six hundred and some six hundred and seventy 670 something i mean it is a long hole but that wind but if the wind's there it favors it you're you're gonna pipe one and then you're gonna have another 330 yard shot with a little water on the right hand side, on a tight green tucked. So it's it's a um it's a great spot. I mean, it's one of those ones that I wish that was on was on the PJ tour still because it's it's a it's a good it's a good yeah. good track. Why did why did they take that off? I don't remember. I don't remember. I remember Ty, I remember Tiger Tiger played there, you know, uh back in the day, but Dude, mm-hmm. it is it is a great track. It is a great track. Yeah, dude, I'm looking at it right now. That the the yardage is seven thousand seven hundred twenty five yards. Yeah, it's That's not insane. it's not it's not short by any means. It is a long track, and even oh. like even like even like red, um, even like like uh, what is it? The golden palm tree. I think the golden palm tree plays at like almost seventy one hundred yards from the tip, seventy two hundred yards from the tip. 
Is that one of the other tips. courses like in the resort there's four, area? Yeah, there's yeah, there's four courses there. So there's Doral, which is the or I'm sorry, it, so Doral is the resort, but you have you have Red Tiger, you have Golden Golden Palm, and then you have Blue Monster, and I'm spacing on the last one, but they're they're all great tracks. And I'll never forget my experience like being there. It was during the inauguration. Um Trump had like just landed at 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 Doral maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes before I had gotten there. <laughs> get out of I get out of my Uber and like I'm greeted with like or I'm greeted by like two two military guys with M4s in their hand who were like, What's your purpose here? And I'm like, Oh, I'm here to play golf. Are you on the T sheet? Yes, I'm on the T sheet. They're like, What's your name? Can I see your ID? And I was like, Okay, here, like, okay, he's good. Send him in. And then I get there or I get up to the front and there's, there's secret service. There's, <laughs> there's more military guys with M4s and they went through my whole bag. They took everything out, like oh opened God. up all, opened up all the zippers, did everything and even turned my bag upside down. And like one guy, like one dude literally grabbed like my, like my divot tool because it was metal and was like, what is this? And I was like, "Oh, it's 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 a it's a divot tool." Like you're at a golf you know? course, bro. Yeah. Are, are you new here? Like, do you know? Like, what, yeah. It, what are it we was doing a sharp, here? It was it was a sharper one. It was like a big one, and he literally was just like, uh, "Do you know? Do we need? Can we get verification on this or whatever?" Right? And I was, like, I don't know, man. Do you yeah. know where Trump is? Do you know Trump is there any chance? Just just yeah. curious. I brought that real quick. Yeah. <laughs> but I I had a I had a great round, dude. I had I mean. I had a really fun round. Um, made a couple, made a couple, made a couple really good eagles. Made some solid birds. Um, it was a good time. It was a great time. Oh, so jealous, dude. That is sick. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so so they got Doral. I think they are. Do you know if they are playing the Blue Monster? Do you think that's probably the only I, one that they I, play? I, yeah, I would assume so because it's it it just seems like it's the only one that would be the most like. That's the one that's played the most. Like the PGA Tours played it, so they're going to. Yeah, I mean, it. yeah, I mean, I, I just feel like you'd be that one that's just it's to the caliber of the players. I mean, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe they play Red Tiger. Maybe they switch it up. You know, like right. Thursday or yeah, Thursday would be, um, you know, Golden Palm, and then you have like, yeah, kind of like Red the, the Pebble Beach, how they mix it up yeah. with, with the courses yeah. out there. That'd be interesting. Yeah. Be interesting. Um, but speaking on another note. Did you hear of the guy who won the children's Texas Children's Houston Open? Uh, I saw I saw something about it. I, I don't know who he is or or anything like that. Stefan Jaeger or Jagger. Stefan Diggs. Yeah, traded to the traded to the Texans. <laughs> that was crazy. Apparently, this guy's been pro for four for twelve years. Just one. I don't know if it's the first time from Chattanooga or residence. He lives in Chattanooga. He's from Germany, but now he's mm. jumped all like you want to hear something insane. Stefan Jaeger or Jagger, Stefan Jagger. Apologize if I'm mispronouncing the name, but he just won one time right in the PGA tour, probably within the last few years. I've never heard of this guy in my life. And he's already right now FedEx cup ranked 10th after that one win. How ridiculous is that? Like, how is he number 10? Are people just that bad? Or they're just like, like, what is going on? He, apparently, he's now world rank 43rd, which I know the world golf rankings are kind of, no one really even follows that, anymore. Yeah. Not even like, you know, Fitzpatrick or a lot of the PGA Tour guys. Like, I don't even go off that anymore. That doesn't make any sense to me. But yeah, it's so ridiculous to think one win gets you to 10th on the FedEx Cup rankings. Well, good for you. At least you'll be in the playoffs. But, you know, dang. I, to be totally honest, dude, like I'm not even I'm not even like sure how the I'm not even sure how the how like the FedEx Cup ranking or I'm just not recalling how how it works. It's point system based off of where you end up on the. I think once you make cut, I think you get points, but that's per tournament and it's only for PGA. And I don't think. I think majors have to actually come and play with it too. Majors do come in and play with it, but it's only PGA tour related, but it's separated from the world golf rankings, obviously, because mm. it's, it's, it's the PGA tour thing, not a world ranking. 
um, which doesn't account for other tournaments, which doesn't account for, well, I think that's pretty much it, right? Other tournaments. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I don't know, dude. I mean, never heard of the suit. I just looked it up and said 10th in the FedEx Cup rankings. I'm like, that's insane. Like, who? how are there not 30 guys that are better than him? Obviously, right now, he's probably doing better because he won. But besides that, like, that's insane. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. I mean, again, like we're, you know, it's kind of a weird time. We're seeing, like, again, the PGA's. I don't know. A lot of people are saying the PGA's caliber of players is like kind of dropped because there's a lot mm-hmm. of no name guys, right? Like we know who the top, we know who the top guys are, but even then, it's just kind of like they haven't been playing just, well. A lot of them. They haven't been, yeah, they Scotty, haven't been playing well. Know? Well, Scotty, yeah, and I mean, dude, like the other thing, um, I don't know if you saw this, but it looks like. Looks like uh, Justin Thomas and Bones, Bones went their went their separate ways. I mm-hmm. mean, that's pretty that's pretty interesting to me. Um, never thought that relationship would would go would go down like that. I mean, he hadn't been playing Wait. well. You know, it's got to be someone. If Justin can't fire himself, you know. I, I mean, Bones is probably like one of the best caddies though. Like, didn't didn't he really kind of make his make his name for himself for? being with Ty- or with uh Phil Mickelson for so many years. To be honest, I don't know. I know he was a name that was uh, in the broadcasting booth for a while and probably before then he was working with Phil Mickelson for a while. Like like I said, I hadn't really been getting into golf until like really 2020 really watching it and really yeah. focusing on stuff, but <clears throat> I know he was famous for something and I would assume if you're saying Phil Mickelson then that's who we caddied for for a while, but I don't know, man. You know, you got to you got to mesh with your caddy, you know, and if that doesn't work out like doesn't matter how good he is, you know. I don't know. I was gonna make I was gonna make a joke, but it's extremely inappropriate, especially for how 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 uh, recent all this news is for for this situation. So I, I just I just kind of gave a smirk there. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I just I saw that and I was just kind of like pretty crazy. I mean, again, like. Dude, the thing that's the thing that's the craziest to me is I just I don't know what's with Justin and, and Jordan. Like their their play has just been so not like them. I mean, I don't know what they're trying to do. I mean, my my worst feeling is just not feeling that same kind of pure swing on certain things. Like that's really how simple I look at it, right? But mm-hmm. it's just so mechanical for those guys and it just becomes such a freaking well and like for like me and you i feel like for you it's you're closer to the professional in terms of things that you notice on like no that's, I'm, kind, I'm that's about, kind of you that's that's kind of you to say wow well, <laughs> but so. no no I, okay i'm comparing you to me like comparing you to me you're closer to them where like you will notice just a little tweak like oh i did this and i meant to do this and it's like such a tiny thing that if you slowed it down in a video you might not be able to catch it but something that you feel right there yeah. where for me i know where i'm hitting it on the club i can tell if i tow it i can tell if i heal it if i hit it low or high i can feel that i can tell you as soon as i hit the ball but for them they have every single part of their swing like perfected because they hit so many dang golf balls like bryson DeChambeau, he they have like the clock you know and apparently he knows his yardage from like every single hour or every 15 minutes of the of the swing clock um and obviously that comes with hitting so many golf golf balls, you know, over and over thousands and thousands of golf balls, knowing your distances. And when you do that, like you listen to Bryson sometimes talk about things he's working on and you're just like, what? Like, 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 <laughs> what, like what was that Tiger Woods commercial back in like the nineties? Where it's like golf swing is an easy, it's an easy thing. And then he just goes into like 50 things in like yeah. 30 seconds of like you just got to do this 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 and using all these terms that you don't understand of the anatomy and things and you're like what and you're using physics yeah. and it's just like the things that they because that's their full-time job and when they love it they really work on that and you have one thing out of out of whack for me it's just like oh i didn't i didn't my arm wasn't straight enough or something like that or i wasn't connected on the swing for them it's just like oh man like Right here, I didn't bring it down a quarter of an inch lower than I needed it to, or I felt my thing like it's just so so tiny of a yeah, difference. Where such minuscule little things, it, it's like what was that? What was that like the ancient story where it's like 
the king who would like feel like a pee like in like his in his bed. You remember that? Like under like his mattress, he had like eight mattresses. So the, the, the story back in elementary school, I remember, you know, it was like a king that would like sleep, sleep on like 10 mattresses. And there was like a P in one of them. I'm like the eighth one on the bottom goes, Hey, what, what's up with this bed? Like how, like, how could you tell it's like a P on like the eighth mattress? Like, there's no way you're going to feel that, but it's just like such a thing that a normal person would just not even notice that, yeah, that you would notice because of just being a pro. And that definitely separates us from them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you bring up a good point. I, I have no idea. I, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with that story, nor, <laughs> um, yeah, just kind of over my head. Like I, I don't know. I definitely don't feel like a pee in my bed. I can tell you that much. <laughs> no, you better not. That'd be the worst, dude. I feel uh, like a, I feel like a giant. I feel like a freaking giant blue whale. <laughs> just. <laughs> Just yeah. screeching, just screeching for, <laughs> for but I mean, like, you, you know, like when you're when you're playing and you're just like, dude, I don't know what's up with my swing, you know, like you're you have like those yeah. rounds where like it's like this sucks. Like, imagine making millions of dollars, like being Jordan Spieth, winning multiple majors, winning multiple tournaments, having multiple millions of dollars, having multiple like be the top of like Under Armour, making so much money, and you feel that you could lose to a division one golfer at one day because like you're just not comfortable with your swing and it's something that's so small but that confidence in that mind is so strong and so powerful that if it's lacking a little bit that doubt creeps into your mind like it is such a big factor in golf yeah and yeah oh it's crazy it's crazy well i mean to that i think you know golf is much like actually much like any sport right you you have to be committed to what you're doing Right. Mm -hmm. And if you have oh, any, yeah. if you have the simplest amount of doubt, like it shows in your golf swing, you hesitate, you maybe just try and overcorrect something on your way mm -hmm. down. And there, there it goes. Right. Like, yeah, that's that, that's how quick golf is. I mean, the golf swing is not something that's slow. Like, you got dudes who are swinging, you know, 80, 80 miles an hour, 90 miles an hour. It's, it's a, it's a big, it's a big, big difference. Speaking of the speaking of swinging, did you see Bryson's video on the rollback that he tried to do on YouTube? Did you catch that at all? I, I, you know what, I was going to, and then Adelina wanted Miss Rachel. Come so, on, Adelina, come on. I know. I, I was going the to bush league, bro. Go bush to league. I, I forgot to go back to it, but apparently he's not a fan. So, I dude, saw it's that, crazy. Because um, yeah, of how technical he, he is. Yeah. Go yeah, back. he was talking about how. I just saw some of the clips and he was talking about how he was like, yeah, he's like, this is, this is not going to be 15 to 20 yards less. Like it's going to be substantially less. Um, and he was just showing the numbers and I was I like, again, I, I saw a few clips of it and I was just like, that's insane, bro. That well, yeah, like like insane. 5% or two to 5% to him is a lot bigger of a difference compared to me with my distance yeah. and the average golfer. But he was just saying also the miss hits were like you know you, you ever what was that that video like of taylor made with tiger woods and he's like yeah i was healing a few and they showed a picture of his like club head and like the ball was like a quarter inch off of the center and that's like healing it to him to anybody yeah. else in the golf world that's a perfect strike but he's so good he's hit so many balls that he knows where it's not perfect um and bryson was saying i'm just barely off the face and i'm seeing it duck hook more or i'm seeing it you know tail off a little bit more and the spin rates are down. He's not able to get as much spin. The ball flies. The ball doesn't fly. Like his numbers are way off. Obviously, he'd be able to figure it out with you know a few weeks to get his numbers down again. But playing cold turkey would be really interesting. Go back with like one of those golf balls, you know. You, you know, have you ever hit like a? Have you ever hit like one of the old old golf balls, like the? the tour like those old titleist tour eight eight sixes or whatever they were have you ever found any no. of those no it hasn't. so so i remember i hit one of those with like you know a fairly new it was when i had my my slider right my uh mm. my tailor made okay. slider i remember hitting one of those and like yeah that ball literally had like zero had zero spin um zero I don't know, man. It was it was interesting. I I was I just remember hitting it slightly off the toe, and the ball just went like hitting it off the heel. And then I hit it dead. I hit it dead nails. 
Um, and it just like dead straight. I mean, didn't move it, didn't move an inch. It just mm. was dead straight. And I, it, this was on a monitor too, but it was like, I just okay, want to yeah. see what the difference was right, between, right. between like the newer pro V's. Right. And like what this was, cause I mean, I was just getting into golf, I think when I did this. And so I was like, oh dude, yeah, if I could save golf balls, like, right. Hell yeah, right money, and I yeah. remember finding, I remember finding those everywhere. And I was like, especially at Big no Art, wonder. I remember finding them everywhere. Uh, right. And so, so then I started looking, but it was like, the coat on the ball was different. The dimples were significantly different. So I feel like they're just basically bringing it back to where maybe it's a ball that's not as forgiving, doesn't have as much give. Like you really have to square it up in order to get, you know, to get some some good some good consistency out of it. Yeah, I mean, speak, speaking of golf balls, yesterday, I, or yeah, I played around at a uh, Madeira Golf and Country Club with uh, with Brandon and. We attempted the break 50 challenge with Bryson DeChambeau uh, that he's been doing at, at there and from the front tees. And I played with a L.A. golf ball, uh, the one that plays more like the left dash Pro V1X, mm-hmm. apparently, you know, high flight and uh, less spin. And, dude, I don't know if it was the golf ball. I'm going to have to try it again because, again, I was widening my stance a little bit um, to kind of try some things out. But, dude, I was smashing some drives, and I was like, w- I just felt it. It felt different off of the off the club, off of the at least off of the driver. Um, iron sucked. Fortunately, I didn't have too many of them, but I, I couldn't hit my wedges to save my life. And I my, I left like three putts, like an inch short in the heart of the cup, and it was just like, yeah, no, it was terrible. Um, but it was interesting because I'd never hit LA golf ball. And I was like telling Brandy, cause he hooked me up with a few, uh, free, few sleeves. And I'm like, dude, honestly, I hope I don't have the best time with these golf balls because I don't want to get addicted to a $70 golf ball, you know, or a $70 box golf ball. And, uh, they're fun. They're cool. But, um, it'll be interesting if I, when I go back to the probably one X to it's, see if I really notice anything. Well, the a- you said you hit the AVX. No, no, this was the, this was the, uh, oh, the left dash. No, no. So these balls wore the LA golf ball, the LA golf ball. Oh, but it played close to equivalent wise the uh, the left dash. Yeah. Um, well, I told you when I when I went to left dash. Oh, Jesus! What the heck? Sorry, my phone just started playing Britney Spears for some reason. That was super weird. Didn't sure. even touch it. Yeah, right. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> I swear. I swear. It's super weird. So. I, I told you when I went to left dash, it was game over for me. I, I, the numbers I was seeing from that was crazy night and day, like different. Um, it really does have a big factor to play. I mean, that that's, that's all I have to say. Like, yeah. I mean, like for me, it's about the, it's about, for me, it's the, the help of spin around the greens that I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking for. And I know for that, you, like for you, AVX would be a great ball, titleist wise. That'd be a great ball for you. Um, shit, bro. Even like I mentioned, even the vice balls. I mean, those. I mean, I know. You create, I know. You, you I create, still need you, to give them a chance. I still need to give them a chance, man. Dude, the only thing. So I got. So I got more of them. The only thing was, is like, I don't know what it is with this, with this series, or with this um, bash that I got, but. Mm-hmm. So I watched this video of um, Colin Morikawa talking about how I guess Grant Grant Horvath like doesn't clean his wedges, right? And I was like, you know what? I'm not very good at that either. Like, let me really like start to go in and clean them with like a wood with like a, a wooden tee and my my scraper and all this stuff, bro. Like those Titleists that I have, and also those Callaways that I that my 50 degree Callaway that I have, right? dude i was ripping the cover off the ball and and Mm. and i'm telling you i hit a few shots on number six at at the club and it's it's only 100 and i think from the tips when the pin is in front it's like a 112 yard shot when the pins in the back it's like 135. i was hitting my 50 degree to 130. bro there was there was like parts of the of the cover in my club but my ball spun back like 20 yards Uh, 
it literally hit like right where the right where the back pin would be at at like one one thirty five ish one and I think I landed at like one thirty two and it just went zip came all the way back down to the hill to the front of the fringe and I was like this no. is dangerous. I was yeah. like, I gotta start. I gotta start flighting some wedges now. Like, I really gotta start. Dude, how do you some not? Wedges. How do you not make sure your clubs are clean? I make sure it's clean before every single shot. Like, I'm not saying like it's either I do it after I just I swing or I just I get lazy. I, I, I just get lazy. Like, I'm just like, okay, well, I'm hitting it great. I already know that I produce a lot of spin. Hopefully, keeping them dirty will just kind of minimize it. But like, oh, it's a, the sad thing is it's it's my scoring clubs, right? So. Like yeah. my nine, my nine iron down. It, I just they're the dirtiest clubs in my bag. But you look at my three iron. You look at all the way down to my eight. Right, they're pearly, pearly. Maybe has like some mud on the back or whatever, but pearly on the faces. And so I was like, you know what, dude? Like, throw your scoring point. club some freaking love, bro. Come on. Oh, I I do, and then I also throw them fucking a hundred yards too. <laughs> oh boy, yeah, the club fall, no. right? <laughs> yeah, but. But I, I kid you not, dude. Now I'm just like, okay, I really need to start flighting, flighting these wedges. Like I'm gonna start playing this middle of my stance and just like saw them off, saw them off. And I started doing that, and dude, still it's just like bounce, bounce, burp, bounce, bounce. Burp. Dude, when I, when I play with the when I play with the Mac Daddies that I used to have, the Mac Daddy threes, like ten years ago, yeah. dude, I had some serious spin where I would seriously have like twenty five to thirty yards, and I'm not kidding. Like I would have the ball mark and I'm like, wait, that's like 10 feet behind the hole. And it literally rolled off the, like, how is that even possible? Like, I'm not someone that's like great, but the spin on those wedges was the reason why I got those wedges was just like, Hey, I struggle with spin. Holy crap. Not this much spin, but like I would have like one of my buddies, Daniel, he was literally like, I was like, how was that shot? He goes, dude, it was a great shot. It landed right next to the hole. And then rolled about like 15 yards, like just back. And I'm like, dang it. Cause I didn't know how to spin. I don't know how to fight. Yeah. I don't know how to do that stuff. And, uh, dude, that, know, that shot, I, I still remember the last time when we did our match play, right. And that shot where you literally almost hold it out for an Eagle. That was crazy. And still, I mean, you like, that was a good shot all the way, but the fact that it landed about two feet behind the cup, we saw how far forward it bounced and then it still sucked back to almost going in. I was just like, that was the one over the water on 13, right? Was no, that, no, the one? that was the short. No, no, no. That was the short, uh, that short par four. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 From the right side of the green, right? Where we had to yeah. go left. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We had to go over that, over that crap where they were fixing, where yeah. they were fixing the, the grass or whatever, filling up those bunkers. Damn. Yeah. I know. Crazy. I'm I'm finally starting to get more comfortable with hitting the wedges. I'm I'm gonna work on throwing my hands down to the to the ball. That's been helping a lot to get more spin. Throwing the hands down on the downswing. Uh, mm. but uh, yeah, man. I mean, I'm loving it. Except for my irons yesterday, because of my lower center of gravity, because my my stance was a little bit wider. Dude, I was chunking the crap out of everything. Fortunately, we we're on the forward tee, so it was just like driver or three wood, and then oh. like a wedge in. Yeah. I was going to say, how, how wide are you going? I mean, I don't I don't think you need to be more than shoulder width apart. Jeff Bagwell. Nice. Not just kidding. <laughs> nice. <laughs> love that. For, I love right? that for you. I love that for you. <laughs> Looks so comfortable. Could you sit there for three hours? No. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I saw this. Um, I think it was I think it was Zaire Golf. Like they, they posted a video of of a uh, Ken Griffey Jr. like out on the course, and they were like, "Did you expect his swing to be anything less than just perfect?" And no, I'm like I'm going through, dude, you gotta find it. And and he's like, it's going through, and it shows it's just like pure shot after pure shot after pure shot, and then it like slows it down, and the guy's like, "Look at how like look at how shallow he just comes inside of that ball and just like smack like." He's just so locked in. Hands are like nice and relaxed down and low. And he's got like this good shaft lean, just perfect ball. Perfect little like – the thing is too is it's like this beautiful little like left push with a nice little draw that comes in. And then he hits like a perfect like two-yard cut. Jeez, man. 
that would have been fun and to it, see on the and it's like tour. the co- the comments the comments are just like the best they're like the fact that anyone thought that he would suck at golf is crazy like right right the fact yeah. the fact that anyone thought that he wouldn't be picking up golf after baseball is crazy this man had the most beautiful baseball swing ever and now look at him he's got the most most beautiful swing in golf and literally one of the best comments that i had saw was like you know adam scott who (laughs) (laughs) that's awesome yeah it was great Uh, okay well yeah i you know i think it's also a good spot to wrap up the pod for now before the master's edition what i'm going to do hopefully tomorrow i'm going to be posting if you made it this far i'll be posting a giveaway on all of our channels for a four dads master's edition hat and uh, hopefully that'll bring up some of the uh, subs and and views and followers on all of our tiktok and uh, social media platforms but Thank you guys all for watching. Don't forget to stay fly and go low, and we'll see you next week when we are discussing the Masters. See you later.